Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing off Cracker's Witherstorm Mini update, which is mini in quotation marks. There's been a lot changed. So, without further ado, let's investigate what's been added, such as you saw from the intro, and two new swords, the Formidablade and the Eye of the Storm. Here we are at the change logs for the quote-unquote mini update, and there's Quite a bit going on i'm not going to read all of it but essentially what you want to know is in the added tweaked section we have two new blocks well a lot of blocks but we have two new swords these were from the command block tool competition which i lost then we have the withered phlegm block which is a disgusting block in nature it pretty much sucks up nearby things and act as a storage container in case you die However, this does not have Curio's compatibility yet as of the time of recording, which means not very useful for mod packs yet. Then, new tainted blocks, world consumption has been changed, six new sickened mobs, and now they kind of work as a team in order to take over the world. Not like escape and run parasites level, but still pretty tough. And then we have a bunch of other things going on, such as some new splash text. It's almost like someone suggested this. Yeah, it was me. But we have a bunch of things. And if you want to see all the GitHub for this, I mean, scroll down. A bunch of things are here. And yeah, this is all the things that have been really changed. And of course, I'm responsible for a few of them, such as the splash text, goat horns, and uh, this particularly funny one. But anyways, now, it's time to look in-game to see what this all does. Starting off, we have this disgusting block here. This is the Withered Phlegm block. You can see, transparent, and it has a storage interface as seen in the intro. And what's important to know about this is that it spawns in the bowels in the place of chests, and it spawns if you're killed by the Witherstorm. Of course, no Curios compatibility, unfortunately. And it shows items that have been trapped inside of it and works as a hopper. Hypothetically, if I accidentally drop my entire permitted bomb stash onto this, you know, I was doing a little tomfoolery. You know, nothing, nothing bad. You can see it eats it all up. Now we have a very unstable block here. This is, well, interesting block to say the least. And it has some serious redstone applications since it's pretty much an item vacuum. If I go into survival, you see, all my items are being stolen, and from a decently far distance too, although the gravity gets weaker and weaker the farther away you are from it. So keep this in mind, but it definitely has some redstone applications, considering it seems to reach about 8 blocks out. Whether this radius is circular, it doesn't seem like it, it seems more like taxi cab distance. But still, it's very interesting to see what this block can do. Make sure to not drop any loose items in the bowels. Or this could be a cool way to locate things in the bowels. Next up for your major gameplay changes, you have the two new swords. The Permita Blade, it raises very slowly, and the Eye of the Storm. Both of these are the winners of the Command Block Tools competition, and each one has their own abilities. Going into survival, the Eye of the Storm might seem like a normal sword. However, if you are on low health, I'm gonna damage myself 19, if I can figure out how to use commands, you can see it's now very, very strong and probably overpowering my voice. But you can see, gain some serious AOE. So keep this in mind. And then for the Formidable, it charges slower than the mace in current versions. If you charge it up like this, then you can go to higher and higher levels. This seems to be the max. Now, if I swing it, you can see, massive AoE. Might be a little inconvenient to use, but hey, both of these swords are a little tough to use, but can be much more powerful than their normal counterparts if done right. For the recipes of these new items, the Fermita Blade is crafted with a Fermita Bomb, how funny, a Command Block Sword, and six End Crystals, which means you're going to have to get another Command Block Book, another Super TNT, etc quite expensive. On the other hand, the Eye of the Storm 
is actually pretty simple. You can see here, command box word for tainted flesh, tainted dust, and a carrot because uh, it looks like a carrot. Ironically, it's actually based off of a drill, supposedly, from the original creator, but hey, it's a carrot now. Over here, we have our new blocks. Some of these are returning blocks, but they've had changes in one way or another. We have the tainted sand, which can now be turned into tainted sandstone. There seem to be no interesting properties about this, besides looking cool. Then, our tainted pumpkins have new faces. Looks a lot cooler. And then... Hardened Flesh now has no animation because it was causing issues. Along with that, Tainted Flesh Veins, which are essentially the Skulk Veins. Although, they don't have the best tiling and kind of look a little plastered on. But if you ever needed some sort of wallpaper, this is the block for you. And then, after all this, there is also the dirt. And you're not really going to see the dirt that much outside of the bowels. And if you can find it, because a lot of things look the same here. But Tainted Dirt is, well, simple. It doesn't seem to have any special properties, no unique sounds, but hey, it's a new block, which means you can use it for your builds. I recommend using this for something related to the Witherstorm, or maybe even a graveyard or something like that, considering it's dark. Next up, the Config, which is now dependent on Cracker's Lib, a library mod made by Crackers in order to make this better. You can now hide this option through Cracker's Lib, in case you don't want people to know that the mod is installed. We have ourselves the Play Minecraft Music Accessibility, because, well, they moved the boss music to use the music slider instead of the jukebox one, in case you don't want Minecraft music playing along with your Witherstorm music. Next up, common options, automatically spawn the Witherstorm. Nothing too much to say there besides, <laughs> new option, and a lot of trolling. World options here, a lot is going on. I'm not going to go through all of it besides you can now customize the cave rumbling, and then our evolution stays the same, flaming skulls seems to stay the same, a lot of this. Withered phlegm exists, so of course it has its own thing. And then we have constant black hole, which absolutely destroys a lot of things. So, turning that on. Then, dynamic flying height makes the wither storm bob up and down. Makes it a bit more lively, rather than, well, weird stuff. So, turning that on. End of phase, formidable, armable exclusivity. So, you can see if only the very end of phase 5 should do this. Instant chomp, instantly kills things. A lot of other things going on. Can't go through all of this because I've already done a lot of takes of this clip. What I'm saying is a lot of mod packs or data packs for this is going to be changed. Explorer Eve and such, and a new one, Cracker's Witherstorm Plus, has transitioned from only resource pack to a data pack, which means you can have a lot more customizable experiences with this using pre-made data packs. Next up, we have ourselves the Witherstorm automatic spawning, and a funny little thing that I suggested to be in the mod, because of course I'm going to talk about myself, this is my channel. But with that... I'm going to make the world. You see that little platform there? Well, that is world origin. That means there's a wither storm. Just like that, the wither storm has appeared. You can still see the timer at the top. There's going to be some loot here. How good? No. But you have all of this, so you can still play your mod and you can have it spawn immediately. And there's nothing super interesting to say about this mechanic. Besides, it will instantly spawn in on that sea lantern. And say you want to not deal with the wither storm. You're going to come in with all of your crazy mods and you're going to absolutely destroy it. Well, there is something you might not want to do. Well, here. I'm going to simulate coming in with really good items. I'm going to come in with strength 30 because you know you can actually melee the wither storm in past versions. You can straight up kill it and skip the whole experience. Now I'm going to start attacking it like this. And, uh, have fun! A little bit of a nasty surprise. And there's a wither storm here. And I have the black hole config disabled, but I'm going to enable it in just a moment. Right here, you can see new debris ring texture. It looks a lot higher poly, although you can see where it ends now a lot easier. Now, if I turn on the black hole config, 
then you can see there is going to be a little bit of hilarity going on. This will cause the Wither Storm to eat things a lot faster. And a lot of things come up through the tractor beams more so, like this. You can see particles where it's sucking up, which is a cute little feature, so that way you know, hey, I'm getting beamed in a moment. And you can see occasionally there will be a spiral of blocks coming up. It's mostly grass right now because of course I'm in the plains biome, but this is how the Wither Storm is going to act with this new config. You also do not get Wither Sickness if you're in Creative or Spectator, which is a really neat feature. No more having to disable it or clear it from yourself constantly. It will also attempt to target structures more. Notice how it's looking at those village houses, because they're made out of non-natural blocks such as stripped logs and planks. And you can see, it's going to go right for them. This means it will dynamically adjust to whatever structures you add as long as you're not using modded blocks to my knowledge. Who knows, it might do that. And you can see a little bit of the black hole config coming into place and destroying the ground. The Witherstorm more or less has had a major visual improvement in all of this. With the Witherstorm's improvements, there's another feature I have not been talking about too much, and this one is hilarious. Oh yeah, some visual improvements to the skulls. So, I'm going to start attacking it. And, that is a blue skull. And this one is very powerful. As the normal Wither Storm, well, Wither, shoots blue skulls, well, this one has its own variation too. What does it do? It does exactly what Blue Skull does. It ignores blast resistance. Have fun. Every time you break a head, it will do that. Which means, if you break a lot of heads repeatedly, say you start shooting it with a bow, who knows, you might accidentally get nailed with one of those. Of course, you're also going to see this a lot in data packs for the mod. Which means it's going to be a little tough to deal with this, considering although the radius isn't that much larger, it penetrates obsidian. And pretty much any block in the game, and apparently in one of the betas, even bedrock. After hanging out for a while under the Witherstorm, you're going to notice the ceiling's going to crumble, and it's going to cause your screen to shake, which is going to be quite funny, because your bunker is going to start collapsing in on you. No more hiding underground. This can also be uh, done with commands. It also uh, desyncs you from your body, in case you, know, you ever wanted that. So, a lot of things you can do with the commands, even if you aren't using the Witherstorm mod, who knows, you might want it installed for the simple fact that you get a cool screen shake effect. With all this installed into the mod, you're going to see a lot of useful things going in. I'm not entirely sure why the Witherstorm is moving so fast, but yeah, you can see why the black hole config is so powerful and has all caps in its warning, along with its dynamic flying height. The Witherstorm is going to be quite a bit more immersive unless I'm stuck in the sky and not going to do anything except destroy things. Another small change, Wither Storms are more likely to target players. Instead of 4 in 10, as in 2 5th chance, it's now a 75% chance, so 3 quarters of the time it's going to choose you over anything else. Inside the Wither Storm, you're going to notice some changes, mainly in the fact that Withered Poem is here, and some new bowels thing. You're going to see more structures here. Sometimes they repeat, as some of them are more common than others. But generally, you're going to have a more interesting experience, especially with the phlegm block. Notably, you can't see what's inside until you already open it, because that's how loot tables work. But you can manipulate it by throwing items into it. Which means, where is the block? Well, keep exploring. If you see it nearby, throw something at it. And now you've generated its loot. And it contains things from pretty much any loot table in the game. Along with that, a new boss fight arena. You can see this one might be a bit easier because you have your platforms around and is going to reduce fall damage from falling, but at the same time might get a little dicey because something might spawn up here or these spawners might get in the way. Either way, it's a new experience that you might want to try out. Along with that, there's staircases and the tentacles may clip into the walls in this mineshaft variation. At one point, there was even planned to be a shipwreck based one that was flooded. However, the fight was too easy like that. But who knows, might make a return in Evolution Part 2, but don't quote me on that part. 
but enjoy your new experience and see what you can find in the bowels now. If you ever wanted to push the game to its limits, here is what the maximum eating size for the maximum size Witherstorm looks like. I've also increased the size of the block clusters by a factor of 2, which means it is incredibly destructive. In case you ever thought your Witherstorm wasn't eating enough, even with maximum size and the lowest delay, it's going to be more and more destructive if you want it to. Of course, this is limited by the strength of your computer. If your computer is not strong enough, I mean, it's not strong enough, unfortunately. And if you ever wanted to try this and you want to have more power by installing some mods in order to increase performance, avoid modern fix for about a week after this video comes out because there is a crash going on with it. But you can see how fast it destroys things. There is a pillager outpost here originally. Yeah. It targets structures and then it will eat everything, which means it's going to be a lot more interesting to see what the Witherstorm's truly capable of. And from afar, you can see, well, it is going to look relatively normal, pretty close to past versions besides the debris rings. And then you come back and see how much faster it is at eating things if you set the config to do so. Now, to wrap up this video, we have the Sickened Mobs, and these are a little interesting. First off, how to spawn them. Of course, they're spawned exactly how other ones are, by getting Wither Sickness on a taintable mob. And then you can summon them with the, ve the beacon. We have a Vindicator here, and then over here, a Parrot with a, quite the recipe. And then we have the Wolf, you do need a name tag for this one. We have the pig. I'm pretty sure this can also be Rubenified. I'll check later. And then some updated graphics, such as for the pillager. And then we have the cat here and a bunch of other things. And then there's the bee. The bee likes tainting the world. Spawn enough of these and now you can get the world messed up. Otherwise, nothing terribly interesting has changed in here. Although there is this interesting recipe here involving the tainted torch. Not entirely sure why that specific recipe exists, but it certainly does. For another interesting interaction pertaining to sickened mobs, it's how they're spawned. Although this isn't a sickened mob, still, notice a new effect for this. It goes in, converges, and now you have your new mob, which you can now slash witherstorm. You can now use a convert, then set the entity, and then you can set it to sickened. Notice there's even a little thing to go along with it. Now, if I convert it again, and then I go to Cured, well, it will go back to being a normal mob. However, if you do this to Reuben, it will turn into a normal baby pig. There is nothing interesting about that one. As for the mobs themselves, quite a few of them end up being generic versions. They're pretty much the same mob, except sickened and now inflict withered. However, some of them have their own unique behaviors. Going in, we have the ones that were added. And, well, the ones that were added are the ones that were added. Yes, I just said that. But, we have the bee, we have the vindicator, etc. The vindicator, well, kind of runs at you. He doesn't do anything interesting. Now, if I go back, we also have our pig. The pig does not do anything either. And, if I use instant health, you can see that they are considered their normal versions of the mobs, and they will go and seek out the mobs that are not sickened. If they are killed, they become sickened. Pretty much a zombie infection. Then we have the wolf. The wolf does not have any interesting behaviors. It pretty much acts like a faster, more dangerous wolf. And the pig also pretty much does that too. There is nothing particularly interesting about these mobs, and they cannot be Rubenified or have their own easter eggs attached, besides a typical dinner bone slash grum. And if you get rid of them, they're not going to drop anything interesting either. However, the bee does do something. It will inverse pollinate things. If I bring it to somewhere where there's a few flowers, it will go and seek them out. So bringing in a lot of them, they'll go and try ruining the landscape on their own. Notice they just turned that into a wither rose. And they'll go around and do this to various flowers. Which means you do have a new way to produce wither roses. At the same time, 
these fellas can cause damage even if the Witherstorm's not nearby. Which means if one of these goes in, and or even just some bees get infected by a stray random mob, then you might end up with quite a few Wither Roses around, so be careful of that. Besides the bee, the rest of them are mostly the same. The parrots are pretty much parrots, but if they're hostile. They'll fly at you, they'll hurt, they give you withered, etc. Nothing very interesting about them. It's really about the way they move that makes them more interesting. I'm not sure if they have an interaction with jukeboxes at this moment. And then, we have ourselves the sickened cat. This is pretty much just a normal cat. And you can see, they seem to all spawn in the same black cat. They act, well, just about the same. The only interesting things about the black cat, well, the sickened cat, is that it moves like a cat, which means it will try pouncing on you. Parrots also seem to follow their respective mobs. I'm not entirely sure why they do this, but they like following the sickened mobs. How this will interact, I'm not entirely sure, but if you see a sickened mob, be prepared to fight a couple of parrots as minions alongside it. After some further testing, it appears that the parrot does try to dance to jukeboxes, but will stop after about one frame of listening. But with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. If I missed anything, comment below. I'll try to give an answer for it, or if it's not implemented, I'll see if it will be slash when. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.